Hello everyone, welcome again to our reservoir simulation class. And today's topic is about oil water simulation using impasse solution. Okay, so we are now in week 15 and we have learned about many, many interesting topics about reservoir simulation. And now we arrive at the week 15. And today's topic, again, it's about oil water simulation using impasse solution. Okay, so first thing first, impasse it's an abbreviation and it stands for implicit pressure, explicit saturation. So this is how we do the simulation. So for the pressure, we will calculate it implicitly, whereas for the saturation, we will calculate it explicitly. So that's the impasse solution. All right. We have previously listed the multiphase flow equations for one dimensional horizontal flow in a layer of constant cross sectional area as consisting of a continuity equation for each fluid phase that are flowing, that is flowing. And this is our flow equation and L can be oil, can be gas and can be water. So we have this equation for each of the phase for oil, for water and for gas. And we need to, to solve them simultaneously. And you know that. And we also have corresponding Darcy equations again, also for each phase. And this is the Darcy equation. So we have velocity, absolute permeability multiplied by the relative permeability divided by the viscosity of the phase multiplied by, this is the pressure gradient. And we know that we have capillary pressure because we have wetting phase and non-wetting phase. So for oil water system, the Capillary pressure is PO, oil pressure, minus water pressure, because capillary pressure is the pressure of the non-wetting phase subtracted by the pressure of the wetting phase. So in this case, the wetting phase is water. So capillary pressure for oil water system is the oil pressure minus water pressure. And for the oil gas system, gas is not a wetting phase. So if gas meets oil, gas will lose. So gas will be the nothing non-wetting. So capillary pressure for oil gas system is gas pressure minus oil pressure. And we know that the total of the saturation, oil saturation, gas saturation plus water saturation, it will be unity. Considering the fluid phases of oil and water only, and substituting Darcy's equation and standard black oil fluid descriptions into the continuity equations, and including production injection terms in the equations, we will result in the following flow equations for two phases. So first, this is for oil, and this is for the water. So we will neglect the gas for this time being. All right, so our flow equation becomes like this. And this one is for the production or injection terms. So on the left side, we have the, the spatial system, all right? Whereas for at the right side, we have the time, the time aspect. So the spatial aspect and the time aspect. All right, and we have here the absolute permeability multiplied by the relative permeability divided by viscosity and formation volume factor multiplied by the pressure gradient. And on the right side, we have DDT porosity multiplied by the saturation divided by the oil formation volume factor. All right, and this is for the flow equation. And by using a simple approach, a simple algebra, we know that the water pressure equals to oil pressure minus 
capillary pressure. And for oil water system, because our lecture is about oil water system, so the oil saturation plus water saturation is one. All right? Okay, you can follow me. Relative permeabilities and capillary pressures are functions of water saturation, formation volume factor, viscosity, and porosity. Sorry, I mean the relative permeability and capillary pressure are function of water saturation and formation volume factor. And we also know that the viscosity and porosity are function of pressure. Okay, so if I write it down, so SW and formation volume factor, both of them are function, sorry, relative permeability KR and capillary pressure PC, both of them are function of SW and formation volume factor. Whereas for the viscosity and the porosity, both of them are function of pressure. And we know that fluid properties as they are defined in the standard black oil model have been refused previously in this lecture. Before proceeding, we shall also review the relative permeabilities and capillary pressure relationships for oil water system. Okay, let's continue. Okay, now we will review of oil water relative permeabilities and capillary pressure. Both drainage and imbibition curves may be required in simulation of oil water system, depending on the process considered. Although most processes of interest involve displacement of oil by water, which is called imbibition, the reverse may take in parts of the reservoir due to geometrical effects or due to changes in injection and production rate. Okay, so most of the time we will focus on the imbibition, which is the process that the oil is displaced by water. All right, but we also need to consider about the, the reverse process of it, which is the drainage. Okay, the, the reverse or the drainage may take in parts of the reservoir due to geometrical effects or due to changes in injection and production rate. So drainage can also happen where the oil displays the water. Okay. Also, the initial saturations present in the rock will normally be the result of a drainage process at the time of oil accumulation, of course. Thus, for initialization of saturations, the drainage capillary pressure is required. Okay, so we want to do the initialization. If we want to start the simulation, we need to start with initialization. And for the saturation, to predict the saturation in the initial condition, we need drainage capillary pressure. Okay, so we talk about drainage process now. Starting with the porous rock completely filled with the water. Okay, so initially water saturation is 100%. And now we will displace the rock with oil. I mean, we will displace the water with the oil. And this process is called drainage process. The drainage relative permeability curve and the capillary pressure will be defined like this one. Okay, so here we have relative permeability curve. The saturation of water decreases and saturation of oil increases. And if the oil saturation increases, the relative permeability to oil also increase. Water saturation decreases, relative permeability to water also decrease. And this is the capillary pressure and we have learned about it. Okay. So starting from the very small capillary pressure, it's actually not very small. I mean, from the minimum capillary pressure and the capillary pressure increases, 
as the water saturation decreases to irreducible water saturation. So drainage process, oil displaces the water. It happens during the initial accumulation of oil. Oil comes from the source rock, from the kitchen, it goes up and then it displaces the water. That's drainage process. It can also occur during the field production. Okay. And now the imbibition process. Reversing the process when all mobile water has been displaced. By injecting water to displace the oil, the imbibition curves are defined like this one. So first we have the rock, the water saturation inside this rock equals to irreducible water saturation. So this is actually filled by oil and then water comes, it will displace the oil and this process is called imbibition. Usually it it occurred during water flood, water injection, and most of the production process. We have oil, and then water comes. Water will displace the oil during the production. And of course, during the injection. So in imbibition process, saturation of oil decreases. And along with the saturation, relative permeability of oil will also decrease. But the relative permeability to water will, will increase as the saturation of water increases as well. And because we have more and more water, the capillary pressure will decrease, okay? Until it reaches minimum at saturation of one minus residual oil saturation, okay? The above curves are typical ones for a completely water-wet system. For less water-wet systems, the capillary pressure curve will have a negative part at high water saturation. Okay, the shape of the curves will depend on the rock and wetting characteristics. All right, now we talk about discretization of flow equations. And we have learned also about this in the past lectures. Okay, discretization of flow equations. We will use similar approximations for two phase equations as we did for one phase flow. Right? Previously, we learned about this calculation, but for one phase system. Now we talk about two phase system, oil and water. So we have the equation for oil and also for the water. Okay, the, the equation is the same. But now we only have the index for oil and water. And this one, okay, the term with differential equation, DDX, will be approximated with numerical approach using finite difference method. And we will describe them with transmissibility of X and then multiply it the, by the pressure difference. Okay, this is also the transmissibility multiplied by pressure difference for oil and for water. Okay, so again, here we have absolute permeability multiplied by the relative permeability divided by viscosity and oil formation volume factor. We have the transmissibility. And then we continue where using oil term and plus direction as example, we have oil transmissibility defined as two multiplied by this lambda divided by delta x multiplied by the thing inside this parenthesis. And lambda is oil mobility, which is actually relative permeability divided by viscosity and oil formation volume factor. The mobility term is now a function of saturation in addition to pressure. Okay, because you know the mobility is a, is function of relative permeability, and we know that relative permeability is a is a function of saturation. 
this will have significance for the evaluation of the term in discrete form. All right. Okay. Now we will continue with this is a very, very interesting. And I think we will stop at this section and I will talk about it in the next section or in the next video. All right. Thank you.